Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. I'm Melissa Matthews and I'm here today with Alison Filler here of Let Love Bloom and she's from the Central Coast. We're both from the Sydney and Central Coast areas and we are wanting to talk to you about people being on their spiritual path. So if you're on your spiritual path, if you're looking to develop your intuition and you're looking for a, some people to connect with that are, that are on their path already in various ways with fun and humour and practicality. We're keeping it light and we're keeping it real. And so we're going to be very, very honest with you because that's something that Alison and I, we do really, really well. <laughs> that's right. So Alison, tell us about you. How did you start on your journey? Well, um, I think the journey has just been, it's not, it's just been such a long journey for me. And it really started back when I was about, you know, 15, 17, okay, nearly 17 years ago. <laughs> Don't say about the age. <laughs> and, well, it was around 30, 31 years of age. And I kind of have learnt um, over the last few years especially how much early 30s is such an important age for the soul and our awareness and how much our intuition can really start to take flight around that early 30s so um, I've heard that from other people but I know early on as a child I was a lot more intuitive than I realized or what people what I realized was any different to anybody else I was very um, sensitive I was the kid who was always feeling and sensing if everyone was happy or not I was the the sister you know if my older brother got into trouble which we never got into trouble with Ain't you know you. my parents <laughs> you know I was the kid I was the sister sitting outside his door crying while he was you know in his room I you know was always drawn to wondering why people were either homeless if we drew, drove through the streets of Sydney um, always drawn to wanting to help fix and you know rescue people and that did take me down a path of many relationships, um, you know, having relationships with people who ended up needing a lot of helping, fixing and rescuing. And especially in my early 30s when I realised that my relationship with my husband was in, you know, a really, really, really bad place and I ended up having to go to my first Al-Anon meeting, which is a support group for people, with, who, um, for loved ones, whose loved ones have a drinking problem. And the first thing that they kind of say to you there, it's like a 12 step program like AA is you have to hand your problems over to a higher power. You know, you've got to let go and let God. And I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> I do this myself. I don't outsource. <laughs> and it's like, how on earth do I hand over this massive problem this weight of my whole family I had two little girls at the time daughters to something I didn't even believe in or see yeah. but I realized that I was in the right place I needed to be coming to this program every week because I didn't know anyone else dealing with this kind of thing and it was this insanity world that I was living in if, if any of you have ever dealt with someone with a drinking problem or an addiction problem it's a really cunning, baffling disease. But so I, little bit by little bit, as I started to hand over little things to the universe, couldn't say God. God was very difficult for me, still is. You know, I've only just started saying it all these years later. But little things started to happen. And it was just crazy to me that I could actually do less and things that I'd never even dreamed of could start to change and work out. It was just amazing. So and I guess that's mine. One of the big things that came out of that, though, is that you you went on a path of, of kinesiology and you actually started to, to heal yourself and, and release um, a lot of, I suppose, I'm not sure what you call it, what type of energy that you would call it, 
but you started, you know, to really work on your chronic fatigue. Well, that's it. During my 30s, this, the stress of living with what I was living with really started to impact my health and well-being. And for six years, I was really, really sick and no doctor could tell me what was wrong with me. So again, around, you know, five or six years later, I was led to kinesiology and emotional freedom technique, which I'd never heard of before. And it changed my life. And yeah, so... Well, I know I've had a session with you quite a while ago because, as you know, I'm perfect, so I don't need much work. <laughs> oh, God. But you heal yourself. That's just, right. You know. I heal myself. <laughs> but, it, but it does make a difference, and I don't know why, and I'm one of the biggest sceptics out there, and even though I've got particular skills and things like that, I'm still really surprised at what comes through in a session, and the same as you would be because you know, like, when you, when you see a client... I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that I do my prep before so that my energy field is clear and so that I'm not uh, thinking about what I want to tell them because, you know, I'm handing it over for a higher power to bring that information through because it's not about me. And then at the end, then I, you know, have my discipline and clear my fields, et cetera, you know, after that. But it, it it's very, it's a very unusual thing, isn't it? It's like handing it over to a higher power. I, you know, it's a, something that I knew about as a child and I suppose a lot of people like you knew something when you were a child too but you know then life gets in the way you know and it's just like oh my god and I'm like digging myself into another hole <laughs> crawling out and we're conditioned another one. It's like, yeah. yeah we're conditioned to always know what to do you know we go to school and if we don't know the answers to things we get into trouble or if we don't get perfect grades you know we're just so enough. programmed to know everything but we don't know everything <laughs> i do <laughs> that's because you've got some very switched on guides that you you know and your higher no, self no 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 i i so tell, really, tell me about your journey then. Well, that's the reason that I, that I have a lot of that humour is because I was always really serious. Like I could see things, you know, as a very, very young child and a very young toddler. And I still remember things from when I was even, um, so I wouldn't even have been 16 months old, you know, and I can still remember things quite vividly um, from that. And it was in like an, a knowing. And even when I go back to these particular times, I, I remember, I remember quite clearly even then like thinking. So it's not even that I knew how to speak or articulate, but there's just a knowing and that, that comes within. Um, and so I never felt alone um, during my mm -hmm. childhood and I was shown a lot of things, but I was more the observer. So, you know, when we have, say, like the angels and guides and the higher self, and that's how I now know them, um, you know, like I would know and I'd just watch people, but it was as the observer and I was shown like... Um, not only what I was looking at, but also I could see within about, you know, half a second to two seconds, their complete life. And what, and what that does is when it shows you that, because this was just being shown to me and I didn't understand why, it shows you the complete person and the whole person and how beautiful they are and that we are to look at people as we look at ourselves as whole and complete in every single moment because it is all part of a whole story. We are not like... We are, that's why I laugh and say that, yes, I'm perfect because I've got everything. But if I focused on this one thing here that I did, well, it would be several things here that I did that wasn't true and correct or, or in the best possible way or the best version of myself, then that is going to overshadow everything that is actually good about me and the focus of that. And as, as I know it, and maybe you do too, um, the higher, you know, the higher self, God, the universe, um, collective consciousness, etc. If we are seen as pure, we are, and that's how, um, and that's what that understanding of ourselves is about. Not in a cocky ego way, yeah. Um, or, but, but as a, as a human, what I call humanness, whereas we see it as, well, you know, what I didn't do the right thing. What have I learned from it, and I'm going to go on. So I would see things like that, and then I suppose. I always used my intuition and I always knew, but sometimes it wasn't consistent if I got really um, stressed. Yeah. So that was, that was very interesting. But I think it was about uh, a few years ago when um, the father of um, my girls died quite suddenly and 
and he came to me and I knew, like I knew that it was him, but but I couldn't believe it because I, even though I did have that ability um, and had sometimes to see dead people, as they call it, um, I I wasn't trusting of it. And I thought, well, I'll go and see a psychiatrist, <laughs> uh, but I'll see a clairvoyant first. And I didn't know that there was special things like mediums in. And so I went to see a clairvoyant and then a medium and it was confirmed and I felt much better. And so then I started that communicating and I went and did, um, and I decided that I did want to go and do that. So um, as a profession, so I went and did a, a clairvoyant healing course amongst others. And that was what really started it. And within the year I was um, full time. And that was how I met you was through, um, you know, the f beautiful festivals. Yeah. And, um, and that was it. We were off. So it has been difficult though. Um, I've seen um, myself like I was, I was very new to the industry and I didn't understand how things were done. So, um, you know, so I've had some challenges there, but, you know, I'm basically a self-sufficient person <laughs> and, um, and that's how I like it to be a lot of the time as well. Yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of on the job training. Like that's the way it, I, it has been for me as yeah. well. It's basically we are just on the job training all the, all the time from. Yeah, we are. We are. Myself we and guides. Yeah, and it's that tuning in and understanding and knowing when you're tuning in or if you've actually picked up the wrong <laughs> the wrong radio signal because that can happen. So you can happen. you've got to, like, bring it back. And Especially if you're not grounded or clear or centred. Yeah, or if you're upset. Um, and that's why decision-making, you know, I don't make decisions on the spot. I will do what you call now. I've gone over to the inspired action type of thing. You know, I like that word. Um, and I, I like that, whereas I'm, but I've got to make those decisions when I'm quite calm. And that's also if I'm upset, if I'm overtired, if um, I haven't been eating properly, if I haven't had enough sleep, and this is regular sleep as well, these are the things which, um, which make me feel a little um, off kilter and, I, I prefer to work when, when I feel really good and I feel really good about myself. And to me, that's a stronger connection. And so how much has that become a much more of a priority to you then, you much, know, doing this work? Much more, much more. And, and it's got to be joyful. If it's not joyful, if I'm doing it because I have, feel I have to work or I have to bring in an income, you know what? It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. But if I'm like quite happy and joyful and engaged and connected with people, that works really well. But I do take my downtime. That to me is really important. Um, and I take my family time and I schedule it so that I'm not overworked. I have a lot of quiet time. I like my own company. So can I ask you then, if for, for the other people who are listening to this and hearing that, they might be thinking, oh, well, you know, like I don't necessarily have that luxury all the time. I've got a full-time job. How do I still develop my intuitive gifts when I've got a, you know, a lot of responsibilities or, um, you know, work and, and stuff like that? How, how could you maybe advise them to still, in, you know, in work on their intuitive gifts? So there are a couple of things that, that I do um, and I find them very, very easily. and. I would say that the majority of people that come to see me, because I also trained in, um, in mindfulness as well. And so I can um, help people with that. So I just do breathing. I sit quietly without any stimulation around me. And sometimes we might need to put headphones in for that mm -hmm. and into, say an app like Calm, which is a great meditation app and it's free. And just listening to that so you're cancelling out the noise and the eyes are closed so that you're not visually seeing anything. And it is actually just oh, just breathing and even you can feel that breath in your body as your ribcage expands and um, deflates. So that I would recommend that for 10 minutes. Mm. Just do the best that you can. Definitely. Because it's like a muscle. Intuition, tapping in. We've all got it. It's just a muscle that hasn't been exercised. Yep. And so that, you know, doing that type of meditation, what that does is it calms the, it calms the physiological system within the body down, which then calms the mind down. So it does take a little bit to get used to, but you'll find that it's really 
beneficial for everything. So for me, that once or twice a day, if you're in great distress, you know, if you've heard some news or you feel quite upset about something, then of course, you know, doing that the best that you can works really well. 10 minutes before you go home, pull over in the car and do that then. Before you go into it, you'll arrive home calm. The calmer that you are, mm. the better your life flows. And so that helps with the intuition as well. It helps you to be aware and because you're not picking up all of the rubbish. You're, you're calmer, you're centred, you're, you're being quite focused with your thoughts and your focus. And, and so you know what the rubbish is. And that is also intuition. With regards to tuning into the guides, that also then starts to develop as well. It starts to develop quite naturally. But one of the things that I love and do is I also journal. And I journal when I'm calm and I have, this is a simple one. Yeah. I normally, um, I'm, I'm, I go with what I'm guided to in my sessions. And so normally people leave with a journal yep. um, as well. And we show, like, and we show them quite simply how to do that, which is basically once you're calm and then you can start asking questions. And it is as simple as that. It is about tuning into your inner guidance and then you have a record. So it can be your inner guidance. You can be, um, you know, narrating in your head, um, you know, asking questions in your head and writing those down. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that when you're in that calm state, you are actually, you're, you're linked in with, uh, what would you call it, like source, organic source, the um, God. You, you're linked in with everything. You're calm. That is, that is that's it. That's your intuition. Yeah. That's a better decision making. Absolutely. So it's being learning how to be less reactive. And I know for me, I used to live in such a fight and flight state all the time. I was con my little nervous system was always on fight and flight. And that is just a very difficult place to tune into your higher self because yes. Again, for me personally, I had to heal my heart and clear out my suppressed hurt and emotions, everything from my heart so I could get out of my head and my brain to stop the overthinking, overthinking, to be able to drop back down into my heart and my feeling, which is where our inner guidance system and our spirit and everything you know is connected to our heart too we've got to be able to balance that head and heart so we can quiet the mind if so many people find it hard i've i've realized to quiet the mind because then their feelings or their emotional body gets activated and that's not comfortable so yeah. you, I've had to do a lot of healing and that's why emotional freedom technique and tapping kinesiology has allowed me to be the open channel that I am today because of, you know, healing my heart. And that's what I would also recommend to people who are suppressing or holding on to still pain from the past or things from their past that they're still not at peace with. Cause as soon as you get out of your head, it's all gonna. Well, that's it, you know, getting out of your head. And so Let's talk quickly about some other ways to get that out. So, because some people won't know or won't even have access to, to, to go to say kinesiologist or uh, for, for the emotional freedom technique or even to have a reading. And again, you know, so uh, something that they can do quite quickly to help them settle, but also to help them to express this is actually again, writing it down, mm. writing it down because it's coming out of the body. That energy is then, it, it's being there. If you feel, you know, like, and I do have clients where I say to them, if you feel that you're writing words that you don't want anyone else to see, rip those pages out and destroy them. But the important thing is that it must come out and you can do that in a private way. You can go and speak to somebody, a counsellor, psychologist, but it is important no matter how we do it, that we have ways that we know that we can do it either ourselves because some people are very private and some people will go and get help. I myself know that I, I do go and talk to people 
um, within a setting that's very, very private because that's it. That's my one hour to talk about this particular situation and I get guidance from that and then and I, and I leave and that's it. And I feel much, much better. Well, I know just tapping my heart, just yeah. putting my hands on my heart yeah. helps me, my awareness, brings my awareness down to my heart and then writing or just tapping my heart gets the blocked chi. Your, your heart sometimes is so frozen over with walls and protective layers and everything. And I know, I know mine was. And so I know one of the first times in one of the meditations I did years ago when I first felt the angels, that pure unconditional love of the angel vibration just flowing down and blending over me it was the most intense magical feeling that i've heard people talk about but i know the first time i experienced it i just cried it, because it takes your breath away it's just that i've never felt even though i have beautiful mum and dad i've never felt that pure unconditional love just that That's pure, unconditional love and all your little pain spots. But it's like, oh, but, but what about this? And, but what about this I've done? It doesn't matter. It just, they don't care. Yeah. They just love you and they want you to be happy. Yeah. And so listening to a guided meditation or just, I just lie on the lounge and just ask for the white light to flow down over me and even if you just practice that it's just amazing getting into yeah. that receptive mode that's the yeah. biggest thing i tell my clients we're so busy doing and giving we're not used to receiving and getting in that receptive mode and it's amazing what can start to flow, right. show up so i see um so that's i'm glad that you brought that up so that technique that you talk about like the white light i see that as coming down so it's really quite wide so maybe about you know 10 feet either side of me because that's going to take in all of my fields and things like that and and so it comes down like right from the heavens i don't even know like how far away it is but that's where i see it, it comes from the beautiful source and it comes right down around and through me so it goes like down in through all the cells and into you know yeah. even, even to the dna and everything like that absolutely and it goes down and it goes right down through into the center of the earth and then up again and so those those two energies, you know, they just go through and they're just like clearing and cleaning, but it's lifting it up. And it's really beautiful. Like sometimes I'm in a state where, um, because I'm, I'm quite hyper-focused and like, you know, like an ADD thing. So mm -hmm. and I just need help. And so I ask my, um, my team, my angels and guides to help me to do that. And I just let them do that. And that actually makes it even more powerful. And that just comes down and I stay with that. So I can be doing the breathing, but it's there. And it's just, it's just making it so that it is what I need at that time. Cause they know what I need as well. Absolutely. They know. And for someone who feels like they have to control everything all the time, or I come from, you know, the, the background that I come from where I literally had to control everything. Yeah. To know that I don't have to control anything, that they are sending me whatever I need and even to show up in my life to yeah. just start showing up, it was the biggest mind-blowing, amazing thing that I just, you know, can't just tell you how much it's been able to change my life to know that something higher than me knows better than me what to do and I can just you know, I know. that it's gonna be all right. It I became so beautiful. Like I don't know when you first started feeling this, I just wanted to meditate all the time. And I've heard some of my clients and other people, all they want to do is sit in the white light. They don't even want to go to work anymore. They don't want to like, you know, do the housework. They just want to meditate. It's just so cleansing and healing and uplifting. And it makes you realise what a dense reality we live in sometimes being a human with all this low vibrational stuff going on all the time around mm. us. But, and that's where disease can really set in when you're living at that real dense, low energy field all the time. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that, so that's, they're great techniques that anybody can do. And with the white light, you know what? 
if your if your eyes are closed, I want to be clear about this because some people don't see, mm. like they don't see, and that's okay. And a lot and, and well, I'm a big feeler first. I just felt yeah. first everything. Yeah, yeah. And so that's another great you know point to say is that you know like now even when um you know before we started, I sat in here and I you know did my clearing work and then I opened my eyes and you know, and I can see like the white light here. And I thought, oh, my glasses are dirty. No, they're not. They're not. It's like a, it's almost like a film type thing. And you might see it as white light or you might just feel, it feels different. Yep. But the point is, is that it's an energy and it's an intelligent energy and it knows what to do. So the less, so for me, the less direction is better. It works much, much better for me. So Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. So now we're going to, um, we've been on this for a while, so we're going to wrap it up now. Okay. So is there anything that you want to say, Alison? Um, no, I just, just want to reiterate. It's been, you know, I'm just really looking forward to having more chats with you and to talking about some really great topics to help people on their journey. Cause we're all on, we're all on the journey. And I never would have realized in a million years that I would be doing this work seriously. You know, I never in a million years thought that I would be doing what I'm doing and even doing mediumship work. I just wanted to like mention one other just amazing aha moment. Like even, even after I healed my chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and I studied kinesiology and I opened my own practice, not long after that, my father passed away and I, six months after that, some girlfriends said to me, oh, do you want to come to this little workshop to connect into spirit guides? And I was like, yeah, cool, because I loved all that stuff. You know, I hadn't really been doing like anything like that. I was just doing my kinesiology. And two days after I went to that place, I was sitting in my backyard having my morning cup of tea and I felt this energy come over me. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to practice what I did at the workshop. I wonder which guide it is coming to me. So I just like centered myself, like, oh, tuned in. Who is this? Blend with me. And then I heard the name Tony. And I'm like, who's Tony? Oh my God, is that you, Dad? And then I just, he appeared to me and started talking to me and was just as excited to talk to me, was absolutely blown away. And because I would never lie about these things. Yes, I've always wanted to be able to have these experiences, but it was so full on. And then very quickly after that, all my kinesiology clients started to show up like people I didn't even know and very quickly would say they're not over the death of this person or the death of that person. And I would be like, oh my goodness, their loved ones are in the room and I don't, you know, I'm not trained in this stuff. So I started to like just gently ask them if they're okay, if I was to bring a message through or connect to them and every single time it was spot on. So I just want you to realize that Many times we don't realize we're being trained to do this work. That it's true. as soon as you start to tell spirit, your higher self, that you want to do this stuff, you want to be of service, that you want to be a pure channel, then amazing That's things can start to turn up. And it, it really helps if you actually turn up and do that work as well and use, you know, and, and be aware that you don't want it all the time. Yes. You want to be really clear that otherwise they will come to you and they'll wake you up because they know <laughs> that you can hear and see it and know that they're there. So you make it really clear that this is the time that I do this. Is that what you do? Oh, yes. I Yeah, I've had to learn so much over the years and how to, like even before I go to work that day, I've got energies around me of anxiety and I'm like, oh, my gosh, is this my anxiety? And I had to really learn how to decipher you know, yeah. this is not my stuff. This is my client who I'm about to see. Their loved ones really keen to get the session going and give me all the information. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a journey that we're always learning. <laughs> it, is, it, is. it is. I'm glad that you brought that up because that's a really important thing, like just to say, actually, this is when I do it. So I'm great. It's great that I can do it, but I will get tired. I will be woken up. I won't be able to sleep and I will not feel great. And yeah. I need 
you know, because we also need that same um, white light and that clearing, that also ensures that if you're feeling anxious or nervous, you know, and you think that um, loved ones might be coming around, you know, you, you can do that as well because that brings you back to yourself. And that's, you know, that's another great example of how that light really helps to, to clear our fields. And or just sure say, you know, not, not now. Yeah. Just say, not now. Or I just say, if you want yeah. me to help your loved one, get them to book an appointment or like, you know. An appointment. I'm like really clear. So it's like, uh, no, uh, out. You have to, you know. It's not that you're being a bad person. No. But it, it, it can really, really start to impact your life and your, well, you know, mental state if you have too many people's spirits. And oh, energy exactly. is hanging around. <laughs> and they so how, how then can people get in contact with you, Melissa, if they want some help? So my website is melissamatthews.com.au and, um, and that's for bookings, for readings and also for spiritual development, you know, and sometimes those readings and, and that spiritual development, which could be, you know, how you naturally meditate and, or, you know, being in, you know, how you can communicate with your angels, your inner guidance, that, you know, generally comes in within one session anyway because it's very effective because I just, you know, bring through what they ask me to. Um, and, yeah, and so even like, you know, for Facebook and things like that as well, it's just through my website. So that's where they'll find all the links. And I think that that's the same for you too, Alison, isn't it? Yes, yes. You can um, obviously find all my details over at my website, letlovebloom.com.au, all my links to Instagram and Facebook. I also have on my website um, a beautiful free guided meditation you can download and another couple of bits and pieces or sign up for my weekly newsletter and um, Bloom News and information and tune in Tuesday and stuff. But I also work, um, you can see me in person in my clinic up on the Central Coast in Kingcumber. All the details from my website or I also do phone and Skype sessions as well for you know, intuitive readings, um, healings, emotional freedom technique, kinesiology, to really heal that mind, body and spirit. So, yeah, yeah same it's here. fun. And it's really important for everybody to know that it doesn't matter because I've got clients everywhere the same as you. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be with us for, um, you know, you don't have to be with us in the room, you know, and we can work remotely very, very well and very efficiently. Sometimes works better. It works. I don't know about you. Sometimes it works better. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really efficient and uh, yeah, I like it where there's not not that many questions as such, like let's do this first bit and then we're going to ask questions. So we always, you know, lay out like this is how it works. But, yeah, it, it can um, be much better, I think, at times. <laughs> so, all right. So thank you very much for joining us and, um, and we'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of Sacred Sessions with me, Alison Filler here and Melissa Matthews. We really hope you enjoyed it. And remember, we love hearing from you. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram or visit our websites, melissamatthews.com.au and letlovebloom.com.au. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.